Hey, hey, math people. So we've all been there before. Whether you're graphing normal lines in Algebra 1, graphing lines of reflections in geometry, considering feasible regions in advanced algebra, or considering your limits of integration in calculus, we've all thought to ourselves, just for a brief second, hmm, what's that line again? The purpose of this video is to go over these four most popular linear equations that some of us may not have fully conceptualized. So what's interesting is that these are the four most simple, uh, most popular lines that you could graph, yet they're the four that the kids most frequently mess up on. So the number one equation that is like the holy grail of algebra one is y is equal to mx plus b. It's the simplest form to graph lines in because you can easily extract a y-intercept and a slope. y is equal to mx plus b is so commonly used in algebra to the point where if I ask pretty much any math-related question to a student in algebra that they may not know, uh, it's very common that they just make guess y is equal to mx plus b. No, this isn't always the answer, but in today's case, it will be. So graphing something like 3x plus 4, really straightforward. Find that y-intercept of 4, poke it. Then find that slope of 3, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. Graph that line, call it a day. So lines where we have a very clear and obvious coefficient of x, the slope, and uh, constant, the y-intercept, those are usually pretty straightforward, no pun intended, to graph. But then all of a sudden, we throw something like y is equal to x at you, and you're like, what? Is this y is equal to mx plus b? Is it even a line? What's my m? What's my b? How do I graph this thing? Uh, all right, so let's start with y is equal to x and y is equal to negative x, uh, because those are easiest to compare to y is equal to mx plus b. First thing, let's find that slope. Now, uh, if you look at something like y is equal to x, you might be confused at first. However, uh, we can think about the number x, or the, the variable x, when you have x by itself, what number is secretly kind of lurking in front? Yeah, the, the number 1 is, is what you said, right? I heard that. Uh, so I'm going to put a, a 1 in front. And actually the same story can be told for the case of negative x, uh, except now I'm going to sneak in a 1 after the negative sign. Okay, so our slope in the first case is 1. Slope in the second case is negative 1. Cool. Uh, next thing on the agenda, let's talk about that b value, otherwise known as the y-intercept. Well, if you have nothing lurking off to the side, absolutely nothing, uh, then what is the numeric representation of nothing? Oh yes, I heard that as well, person on the other end. Yes, it's a zero. Here you have like a lurking plus zero. Here you have like a lurking plus zero. In which case, we have a b value of zero. I have my slope. I have my y-intercept. We can actually graph these equations. And there we go. Okay, how about we take a look at the other two lines that a lot of people always tend to flip-flop. Okay, so it's very common to flip-flop these two ideas. It's actually what inspired me to make this video. I just tested a few weeks ago on lines of reflection, and like most kids, flip-flop these two ideas. Uh, and I, I just want to hit that home right now. Uh, so I did a few things intentionally. I left the space open in front of this zero for y is equal to, and I also labeled up the x and y axis. Uh, now let's dive into actually graphing these lines. Uh, okay, so how about we do y is equal to zero totally and completely first. Um, let's kind of draw back to y is equal to mx plus b. Uh, okay, well, uh, I, I have no mx, so what's going on here? Well, if you think about it, you have no x's. You have none of them. What is the numeric representation of nothing? Zero. Yes, zero. I heard that. So here we have a uh, zero x sort of just sitting in front of um, this zero over here. My y-intercept of zero is actually right on the origin. And if I have a slope of zero, that would be up zero, right one. Up zero, right one. So on and so forth. Actually, it's this perfectly horizontal line. Perfectly. Horizontal line right on the x-axis. So why do kids flip-flop these ideas well, it's a little bizarre. We have y is equal to zero here, yet we're on top of the x-axis. Can you maybe take a guess as to what's going on in x is equal to zero? So with x is equal to zero, that, that's pretty bizarre. That is very clearly not going to be in a traditional y is equal to mx plus b format because we have no y. Now, the way I think about x is equal to zero is I think every single ordered pair on my line will have an x value of zero. So think about zero comma one. That's right there. 
Think about 0, 2. That's right there. 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, and so on. We actually get this perfectly vertical line now on the y-axis. Here on this vertical line, every single ordered pair that exists on the line has an x component of 0. Here on this horizontal line, every single ordered pair that exists on this has a y component of 0. Do you see the difference between the two? Another way you can think about x is equal to 0, this is the one that cannot be written in that traditional y is equal to mx plus b form. The slope of something that cannot be defined is undefined. Yeah, sure, the y-intercept is 0, but the slope, since it's not in that nice y is equal to mx plus b format, is not definable. Try to find this slope here. It's actually up 1, right 0. Up 1, right 0. Something like that, 1 over 0, isn't something that is definable because we're dividing by a 0. Rise over run, in terms of regular everyday life, uh, this slope is not something you can just climb. Uh, it's like a wall. You can't necessarily climb a wall. Whereas in the y is equal to 0 case, uh, when something has a 0 slope, it's like the ground. It's easy to walk on the ground because it's got no slope. So a lot of kids just tend to memorize the, oh, it's the opposite idea with x is equal to on the y-axis and y is equal to on the x-axis. But the shortest, easiest way to verify, in my opinion, is to think about the ordered pairs. Here we have ordered pairs of x value 0. Here we have ordered pairs of y value 0. So if you're wondering where I learned all these things from, I learned it from a movie called Lion King. See, now lines can be pretty funny, right? They can also be pretty fun too, as you can see here. They sure know how to dance. All right, that's all I have for you in this video. I'm going to ask you to keep mathing on, and I'm going to very clearly do the same.